what is unabsorbable. What is this? Oh, we moved, we talked about 2001, which is September 11th. Then Islamic Leaf managed to produce new initiatives through the president. No, 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 I'm fine. 2004, we started to communicate with the global political community. Tony Blair, George Bush Jr., all the presidents, ministers, that are not, Islam has no relationship to terrorism. <coughs> and we have the document, April 2004. We wrote to many presidents, many ministers, to start to tell them our humanitarian work has nothing to do with terrorism. This is what we call advocacy. This is what you, know, you stand in the middle of the storm to maybe save a dog or a cat or a cow or a gazelle or a human being. You got it? Don't think too much about what I'm talking about. Look at me. I advertise you. Okay. <laughs> now I'm going to hypnotize you. Sleep. <laughs> now she's <laughs> Okay? So, really, that's why Islamic Leaf has managed to create a material forum in 2009 and Muslim Chess Forum at the same time. This is a different level of intellectual capability, of the thinking ability of the philosophy of thinking of the ideology of Islamic faith. Did you understand anything? No? I know that. I even know that. Allah, Allah. And I'm going to tell you, I'm not sure. One of the most important things that Allah Ta'ala has given is an English, 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 Irish, 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 I'm sorry, originally Irish, has given. Yes. Yes. <laughs> You know, you know what you told me? You speak English, which I do not understand. But when you finish your speech, people start to clap for you. I don't know why. <laughs> why they clap for you? I said because I'm a philosopher. Speaking a language beyond the, like, the ability of the people to understand. So 2004 and onward, it was our vision to protect, and we mentioned in 2001 in the Torah, we are standing for our Muslim community globally. It took us four or five years to set that five or six organizations to sit down together to decide how to create a platform to connect and communicate between Muslim children in the UK. But Islamic Leaf, Muslim Han, Human Appeal, uh, uh, Muslim Aid, I can't remember number five. No, the third one came later on. Well, another one. This is on the Muslim side. Human Relief. Human Relief Foundation, sorry, HRF. Five years to sit down to five organizations to decide about how can we work together. Not work, to communicate and coordinate together. Same year, we started in a bigger ocean to create a humanitarian forum through Islamic Leaf. It's not only feed, provide water, sanitation, no. Lobby, connect, communicate, advocate, build partnership. <laughs> to swim in the global ocean between countries, very difficult. We will we will send this letter to UN and other bodies. In my office at that time, I used to have Samira, Fatima, and Wafa. Before that was uh, Khalid Mawadid. I have a mailing list every year, nearly three thousand. You know to who? The presidents, kings, queens. Prime Ministers, Ministers, MPs, Lords, Senators, 
Kyrgyzstan. Globally, globally, including country you like and country you don't like. Because in communication, there's no likeness or dislikeness. You got it? You need your message to reach the unreachable, whether we like them or don't like them. And the idea came back to one of the researchers who was working for the Swiss government and the foreign office minister of Switzerland at the time told him, Jonathan will see this letter. He came to me to speak to me. Yes. From the very beginning, the Swiss, the British, the German, as government, as well as UN OCHA, Richard Cross, and the others came to the idea of the new humanitarian forum. To build a bridge. You know, you know my finger now. Do I need the telephone? I need the telephone now. <laughs> to build a bridge between the east and the west, the north and the south, through the focal point which come from Islamic League called the Himalayan Forum. We had a big conference in 29-30 of June, I think, 2005. One week before 5-5. Five, five. Or 7-7 five, seven, or 5-5? Seven, 7-7, seven, five, five. Seven, seven, which is the, the bombing in London. To decide that we are going to create him material. Within less than June, yeah, within less than one year, we managed to organize 14 consultation in 14 countries. You know why? Because the a government of what I mentioned before and others decided to take an initiative in their country and to push us around the government. As his Excellency was talking about the government of people and the social workers in the country. And they were trying to make a parallel organization without inviting me. I said, no problem. They invited two people who were more hard learners than myself. I don't know, I don't And Fadi Hatan. I said, forget about Hanif Band. I don't need to go there. I know that Hanif and Harun and uh, sorry, Harun and Fadi, when they go there, there will be 10 Hanif Band. And it became 50 hundred men. But when I rang this government on the telephone, the Paulian representative, he said, No, you're talking about one or two Gulf countries. I want to talk about Muslim countries. He said, What? All right, here we go. The last 10 days of Ramadan, 2005. The last 10 days. And listen to these young people. We started our first workshop for the world in Damascus. Then we moved last 10 days of Ramadan. We were fasting with uh, Sister uh, Rafa. Then we moved to Jordan to meet one of the princes there and to put the seed. Then we moved to Yemen, another consultation in Yemen. Then we stopped in Qatar to have consultation in Muhammad al and Ali house. This consultation for hours down the Then we went to Indonesia. Went to, to Malaysia. Then we came back to Turkey in the last 10 days of Ramadan. No, I will drop Malaysia because it wasn't there. Indonesia, then Turkey. In 10 days, we managed to go to Syria, Jordan, Yemen, Indonesia, and and then I did Because he challenged me. You know what? He challenged Rawa. Rawa, nobody can bend her, can twist her arm. And his excellency, nobody can twist his arm. He has the knowledge and the experience and the know-how. And the operational field experience. You want to twist my arm? Get it. Their meeting with were at Uganda. We finished five consultations before me. You show my, your teeth to me, I show you my canine. All my teeth are canine. Cutting teeth. Don't 
they give them. <laughs> Ever. Not that. No, for example, Lebanon, Sudan, what's the question with Lebanon? Lebanon, Sudan, another country. We went to Pakistan, Bangladesh, Malaysia. We went to Egypt, Kuwait, South Africa. And some of those didn't stop for us. Well, what happened? One <laughs> more for team consultation without putting an agenda to dictate our ideology, as His Excellency was talking earlier. It is there. You see? It's your meeting in your local language. What's your problem and your solution? Five problems. Capacity building for a consultant for 1,300 or 1,300 organizations. And this is for uh, consultation. Capacity building, understanding human service standard, communication networking with governments, and bridge building. In the five consultation with the local different language. I was there only to say, Assalamu alaikum, here we go, cut the ribbon sit down and enjoy the rhyming of the Urdu, the Hasa, Malay, Arabic, Turkish, and smile. You don't have to understand it, but you feel the music to your ears of the spoken language to fire of this five outcome of this. And here Islam is created in material form. The Islamic League created Muslim Charles Fund. Then the first ever Muslim conference about HIV AIDS, organized by Islamic League in 2007. And so it was chosen South Africa. You know why? Because actually South Africa was infested by HIV AIDS. More than 200 delegations came. Muslim, we even were invited. Some of the non-Muslim organizations, without mentioning them. We went even some churches. And one of them was actually uh, making some funny things against us, and we ignored them. In the meeting, the people wanted to come back at him and said, no, forget about it. I'm not going to, yeah, but this actually have what was the vision of Islamic belief to look at these gaps, global gaps. HIV AIDS, we didn't have a say on HIV AIDS. We didn't have coordination between us and connection with Muslims, between Muslim and non-Muslim. We need to bring a platform among these Muslims, which is still Muslim Chinese Forum there, and still the Mediterranean Forum. This is the level of your intellectual capability after being in the business for more than 25 years. When you rise, rise. لَمَّا تَعْلَى when you rise, rise. When you rise in the building, the building means the money in the structure. Rise in the intellectual capability and the philosophical thinking of your culture, ideology, and message. You don't become a graduate of primary school and controlling or governing a multinational organization. Can't. When you rise, rise. We are elevated, be elevated. Whenever you mature, you have to find a new dimension. You have to pave a new way to create a new direction. Because your message should not be local only should not be national, should be, not be regional or international. Your message should be universal. Mark Sarnaka in the Rahmatan. Come move to the other one. Uh, this is actually, uh, I mean, I talked about all this. This is, uh, this is, if we go back to how we started, emotion. Emotion, emotion. But while we are emotionally excited, we did not stop working. You know? 
change your emotion into a positive energy to carry you from a spot to a spot to let you to rise above most, not even all, at least most of the challenges you face. Emotion should not be a reaction, should be a powerful, dynamic, positive action to transfer the emotion into community work, or community building, or peace building. This is the first part. The second building in Islamic Relief was to build the structure. And we started discussing the structure of Islamic Relief in the mid-90s. First time we started to discuss it was in 1992, with Atar Lafayette's given, who's still working up till now. And we decided to make three departments. Support department, which including finance and logistics, fundraising department, and program department. This was the first structure of Islamic Relief in 1992. The first global Islamic Relief meeting were made in 1991, or, yes, or 1991, was in Bismillah building, in a Maisonite. Maisonite, yeah, yeah. Mabin al-Tabiqayn. But historic. People come from Sudan, from Bangladesh, from UK, from Germany. <coughs> At that time, Germany was not there. Even France was not there. Then we had the vision of bringing everybody together, from field offices to headquarters to what we call at the time fundraising office. You know, this meeting is the best meeting of nurturing, strengthening. Deprecating. What do you mean by the three words? Nurturing, you need nourishment. You are anemic. I need to give you some vitamins. <coughs> you are for Spain, a poor country. You know who is going to give you the nourishment? The people from Sudan. The people from Niger, Nigeria, Mali. Look anemic. You got it? This is a tablet from Sudan. And this nursery. One there, there was a second one, I said. Nursing, second one, what I said. Lubricating. Huh? Lubricating. When you sit down with others, Islamic belief was already like a machine. But with all this juncture and joints, we need oil. The oil will come. In the story of the storytellers, <coughs> will tell you what they've been doing there. So you rise inside their dreams to fly high inside the solution you want to provide to the local community, which are your masters and your employers. Strengthening, because you feel you are related to 50 countries or to 40 countries. Once upon a time, one day, somewhere, somehow, somebody told you, told me, told you, I want you to become like you. And I said, no, you are not good enough for me. I want to become like the family of the International Committee of Red Cross, stroke the Federation. Because this has hundreds of millions of volunteers. UN is a government organization. Different school of thought. Different philosophy of thinking. We want the grassroots. One of your achievements in the 80s, sisters and brothers, is to create Islamic relief games. Football, volleyball, basketball, kabaddi, cricket, table tennis used to attract thousands and thousands of people to come and play. Afan was one of them. You know Afan? Panchima. Tadi'i Tani, Fadis Kandrani, Jangir, Shaheen. All those were volunteers of Islam. Anwar Khan were volunteers of Islam and Philippe So we were ahead of our community. And we were ahead of the time. 
Islamic Relief Concert. We started as well. But where? We started in, in, in a place called Royal Albert Hall. A dream of every aristocrat to go to listen to the opera and the symphony that we composed. Are you a maestro? Compose for us. <laughs> During the breakage. <laughs> <laughs> this was to bring the Muslim community to places they had never been there before. When they were coming or lying, the Asian community, they were scared when they called them this. What to say? This is the queen, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, opera place. Even when we took them as Islamic League Games to NAC, the largest uh, exhibition center in, 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 in the whole of the, of the country at that time. They were coming scared, never been there. But you have to bring your community to the high level places, let them to feel that they are a part of the greater community. The curry, the plow, the rice, where you are among the people of the plantains of the Islamic Republic. So how are you? So we shouldn't be here. No. <laughs> Coming with the, you know the pots? The Pakistani or the Afghani? Sitting down with, uh, with the, no, not many uh, uh, Moroccan, sitting down with the kebab, the musa, eating and enjoying the day of the games. One of the most remarkable stories is the Rawa, because he's still young. Few young people used to put them in our place to sleep overnight before the game. And they pass by the they were sleeping in the kitchen. You know, when you when you have young 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 people like I hear them in the evening. I keep talking, like I keep hearing somebody next to me in the I'm two or nine. Be careful, I come and knock the door on you. <laughs> Two digits speaking. I came back to the please stop and go sleep. Came back after two hours. Everybody was talking. Then I switched the light off. It is a true story. They're from Brad where from? Bradford? They are from Brad. <laughs> Bradford Sharif. My cousins. <laughs> <laughs> uncle, now now uncles. Now uncles. Now. And Bradford said, I will switch the light off. And if you don't sleep, this lie, I don't know how to say it. If you don't sleep, wake up before Fajr, you will never win. I remember that as a challenge. Then I did it. Six o'clock next day, I found young people at the age of 16, 17, 18, jumping. <laughs> we won. I said, okay, Mubarak. I said, we won. I said, okay, Mubarak. So what do you want me to do? I said, you came and told us, don't sleep, pray fast, you will never win. We slept, we prayed fast, and we won. <laughs> this is a story. When you made the challenge to the people who would like to win the trophy. But the condition, pray fast. You think? Your belief, your action of development, of success. This was the Islamic belief game. But you need to have that in Europe. <coughs> you got it? In Italy. They are everywhere. All right, all right. Anybody here? See, I talked about these three pyramids. From emotional to social to intellectual. Unfortunately, we at the moment, to be very honest, not to say anything negative, we are stuck between social and intellectual. Intellectual means you produce your philosophy, you produce your research, you produce your culture, you produce your values. You produce your ideology, which is here. You have the capacity and the ability to produce this one. 
But Islamic people is stuck here. Moved from the emotional to the social, which we call it domestic program. But you need to be here. You know why? Because you sit in your organization and somebody throw at you a project with a philosophical ideology behind it, embedded inside the structure of the project. And because you want the fund, you follow the philosophy. You want the fund, you follow the culture. So when are we going to start to produce our new ideology, our culture, our philosophy of thinking, and export it to others? When we believe in research, when we invest in research and strong communication, and when we make strong partnership. Because now, to be very honest, Rabat and Your Excellency, we cannot afford anymore to be lazy. Because we are leaders. You are leaders. Whether you like it or not. If you believe that you can lead, you will find the way to learn to lead. But if you would like to be a follower, be a follower. Anybody will can step on your head and on your toes. You cannot afford, after 40 years, to be always led. To be always led. The Hafid Omar, Si Omar, is the granddaughter of Si Omar. Right. <laughs> did, I, did I ask you to laugh? Apologies. Did I ask you to cock it? To giggle? Giggle? Explain to them the song. <laughs> There's an Egyptian song. <clears throat> And it's called Habak Ahmar, which means I love you, you donkey. I should sing this song, please. I think Dr. Hadi should sing it for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Habak Ahmar, it's about donkey, it doesn't do the AO. It's not the AO. I love you, dear. Okay. okay. You are, this is about myself, by the way. Ya Umar, Ya Gamal. أول مرحلة من مرحلة العمرية للشباب اللي في الغرفة دي هي مرحلة الحمورية. The first stage of your life is to follow the philosophy of حمورية. استعمار استعمار حسحمر داخلين. Yeah, to work like donkey. You are young. You have the power. You have the time. So if your job takes five hours a day, make it ten. But then, during the stage of becoming working hard like a donkey, who just came to me and who I will add them. You make me a donkey in Ireland. Okay? You remember this meeting in the restaurant with the volunteers? And uh, you work like a donkey. Why? To gain experience, knowledge, and wisdom. Within these 20 years, you'll be able to have the knowledge and the confidence and the experience which will lead you to move to another stage. Actually, another stage called the wake up call. Musaharat, advocacy. You cannot advocate unless you know, you have experience, like, like his excellency was talking about his experience, and he was looking at typical advocacy, global, local, and international, in all in his speech. Musaharati, or the wake up caller, is waking people up, waking up communities. That's you, going from the donkey stage to the wake-up call. Then you become the blending stage, or the mixer, or the blending mixer. What do you mean by that? So the excellency or rawa after 30 or 40 years in this field, 
can sit down with young people and listen to them, their ideas, and with his wisdom and her wisdom, can take the ideas and change it into a product to be implemented by the young people. So here, the, the, uh, the role of His Excellency is to sit down with you and blend your, your ideas into a product, which you have to believe that it is your product. This is empowerment and ownership. So let's move to the number four, which is this product by you will be able to enable you to build the community. Because they sat down with the wisdom, with the experience, and he and you produce this, this, this product to build the community. Because no matter how strong and fast and educated you are, you need the wisdom. You need the history. You need the experience of the people, by right? people on the stage. Okay. Then, after that, what does it do with Nubuwa? I will tell you, it's the Muhadra and the Humuria, and the Nubuwa and the Tama'iyya. What does it mean by prophecy? After 40 years in the field, you know that Nubuwa is either from heaven, Allah SWT sent his messenger, which is, I'm not talking about this, or you become the wise man or the wise woman which will be able to forecast or prophesy what will come because you have seen it all. Okay? So, you go to these five processes, or five stages, you will become, you'll be able to prophesy and to protect the community when there's a change and they need your wisdom. This is your journey for the 40 or 50 years in the middle of the stream or the ocean or the tsunami of the social world. When you put it on your Twitter? No. <laughs> Just for me. I'm joking. And I'm joking. 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 I'
in Andalusia, or the libraries in Baghdad, or the libraries in uh, Damascus and the others who could have been walking between the galaxies. Like so this morning, you want to go to see your auntie in Mars. And you are living with Jupiter. Yeah. I said, Auntie, yes, I'm going my car. I come to you by 5 o'clock this evening. And you said, Oh, Rawa, I would like to have a cup of tea with you. I'm in Atar Karim in Greece. Neptune. Neptune. He's in Neptune, Mars, Jupiter. This, I'm serious. The man, said, the man, the one who won the Nobel Peace Prize, was talking about your civilization, your history, your knowledge. And we don't care. Especially for the people who came from Spain. Exactly what he said. That being, Namshi bain al majarat fi In English or French. Yeah. Travel uh, between galaxies uh, through map roads. She's the auntie, what? In, uh, in Mars. In Mars. And you are in Jupiter? Yes. And he is? Neptune. And where are you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you can meet in the middle, eh? in Starbucks. <laughs> yeah, we have a space in the middle. This is what uh, Pierre Curie said. Ah, it's finished. And galaxies, okay, uh, I, I ended. I ended. No, 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 no. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. خلاص بقى. أنا بتعرف أكلمكم واحد في أغنية بحبك يا حمار. طب العرب إيه؟ العرب آه. Other people out of Islamic people, for example, people who are still, even they don't manage to go to the social. Most of our guests are still Muslim. But you manage to go to the social and they're struggling to become intellectual. Hands up for your question. I need the question to come from you. Sure. You stand up, please. Sure. You stand up, please. Yes. Make a statement or a question. Um. <laughs> That's a microphone. Um. Can somebody else go and then I'll go You know why I'm saying this? Because you have to be ready at any time to face anything. Ready at any time to find the solution to the problem. This was your question. Thank you. <laughs> Anybody else? Abdali, I name you and the good. I name you and the good. I name you and the good. My question is you spoke about the human. I have a choice. You spoke about the humanitarian forum. It's still alive now, I, I okay. imagine. How does it work? How many um, entities are there? Okay. And do you still attend? And second question is, um, what countries did you open? And what role were you? Because I think I see that your your main role was human re, re, no, relationship with the government in lobbying. No, the Rotary Forum is still alive, but very, very small organization because people don't believe in what we do and they don't fund what we do. But they're still struggling. You know, bring the Ahmad back here. Regarding what? Regarding what they Oh? Yani, uh, the Rotary Forum is like a car driven by a donkey and the hammer or the arbaga, what do you mean? Donkey driver. Yeah. Just what we want is the one Barsim. Even the Barsim is not going to get it. Even the grass for the donkey that we cannot break. Because I can call a material form like this donkey with a car. It's very difficult to to change the mindset of the big organization to invest in communication and working and other things. Partnership is not only like, like His Excellency said, not only between government. 
the government, people, mentioned about people, local community, uh, community leaders, like uh, said the Sultan of uh, in the four, in the four, they were ignoring the Sultan in the four. Because he was not wearing proper dress or proper shoes. And they failed. They said, Where do you see the decision maker? Go back to this man. Have he, he mentioned in his speech to Dr. Bakker about local leaders, local community, local organization before the government. You have to have multi dimensional partnership and relationship. Also, you can address the, the question to His Excellency, <coughs> uh, the Ambassador. Mm -hmm. I have a question, please. Um, this is to, to both, inshallah. Um, inshallah, mashallah, you went through a lot of the successes, you know, that some of the uh, hurdles you faced and some of the challenges and how you overcame. Sometimes we learn more from our mistakes. And I'm sure, mashallah, you know, with experience, there was a number of mistakes made. What can you advise this young team so we don't make similar mistakes and we learn from those mistakes? If there's any mistake that you made, you would advise us to. Thank you very much. To, uh, my advice is please make mistakes. Keep <laughs> <laughs> making mistakes. Keep making mistakes. Because this is the, the only way that you can progress and you go forward. You learn from the experience of others. Don't make your own experience. You learn from the mistakes of others. Don't make big mistakes. Make small mistakes. Ah, خلاص. Just like kind of an extension of your question, how do you prevent becoming discouraged from the mistakes? No, no, you just wake up. Uh, up, stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up. She's not. I don't like him. I don't like him. <laughs> I'm just saying, how do you um, prevent becoming discouraged from the mistakes you Because sometimes you're like, oh, I'll just learn how to do this anymore. How do you stop becoming discouraged? Discouraged by making all the mistakes. No, I was, I was encouraged by my mistakes. He was encouraged. Well, well look, I, I, I think that, uh, well, you know, you know, even, even, even in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when we make mistakes and we, we ask forgiveness, it's better than those who don't make any mistakes, of course. Because it's the only way to live, you know. And, and the problem is why we are doing humanitarian. We are working with different societies. You know, uh, I, I, my experience in Africa. But for sure, if you work in Muslim majority areas like West Africa, problems you face are completely different when you work with Muslim minorities in West Africa. It's completely different. So even in one continent and in one area, it's different. You know, in one area, when you work with, with nomads going behind their, uh, their, 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 their flocos, cows and so, and when you work with farmers, this is two different cultures. Same country. So, so in the same country. So even, even in one country, in one area, it's different cultures. And we need, I mean, to, to get acquainted to all that, to all those things. We came from where? You, you came from UK. You came from US, you came from France, you came from another culture. So to understand the culture of the people itself and to get acquainted with it and to accept it, of course, it takes a long time. So during this time you make mistakes. You know, uh, there is a good experience made by uh, Peace Corps. Peace Corps, right? Americans. They did something good. I don't know what they said. I, I did it when I started my work in, in Makari Samini Rata. Because we want to know better the societies. And so we, we, we took just young. Uh, uh, yes. 
We have people who tell them, and we put them to leave one year with these local communities to know the local language because it's how they can communicate, to know the, the culture of the people, how they, 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 they do each other, you know. So, and, and you have tried that, tried to experience with those people, with others who dare from you. One year. You stay one year. You stay one year. You, you start, you live with them. You say, just you are, when you came from UK, going to Kazamas in South Senegal, they will tell you, you go to the Kazamas, the, the chief of the village is Mr. Ka. He has uh, three sons, five daughters, five women, so, or five wives, sorry. And you have to know all of them. And you don't, and you don't, know, you don't know the language, the local language, the Kazamas language. So you have to understand it. You take one or two months, it's very difficult. And you, you get acquainted with the people. So to know the, the local cultures is very important for us. Why we, we make this experience, we commit a lot of mistakes. Uh, so that's why the, the big organizations, they learn from their experiences and they, 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 they just, they, 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 they told the new generation how to, how to deal, how to deal with that. So my, uh, my advice, don't get discouraged at all. Whenever you make a mistake, learn uh, when you make the mistake, correct yourself and go forward. And this is how we can, we, we can find build our own experience in different, uh, I speak in Africa, Asia is the same thing. It's even more complicated when you go to Asia and so forth. Can I ask, I'm sorry, I wasn't um, I think um, the thing about your question uh, puts me back into what I see now with your generation. I'm like in the middle generation, uh, a bit older than you and a bit younger than them. I'm 17 years old. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, of course. <laughs> I'm, I'm 16. <laughs> That's all. Um, I think um, you are a very lucky generation because you're more aware of uh, what is more politically correct and not. But I think that you are facing a very big threat to everything, uh, uh, every other value is that you are discouraged. You are taught that courage is something bad in a way, that it's reckless, that ambition is reckless, that when you are uh, barefoot and you have nothing and you're looking at the stars that you are a man, uh, man or woman. So I do think that when you ask the question about what if I get discouraged by mistakes, it's because you've been taught that you have to be more perfect. And there's nothing called perfection. Perfection is only for the creator of the world. So when you put yourself, when you get to this humility and just be humble enough to accept that you are a human and you will make a mistake. And you should make a mistake, otherwise you're not really living then your approach towards mistakes is different. It's just a process. You go through it. What's important, the real failure is not the mistake. The real failure is not to learn from it. So that's what I think. Thank you. She was surprised to know that a man married a white, white woman. Yeah, but. <laughs> no, 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 no. Let, let me take you with the German. Yeah. We are taking you from the village <laughs> to the ocean. Take her. <laughs> How many wives in the country? Huh? And then, I was with one of the Dexia leaders on the plane, and somebody told me that he just had his 69th marriage. Wow. 69 marriage. Because they found that it's a political, because they want, he wanted to make a big trial for his children, daughters, and sons, and so Mormon in America? Anybody from America? It was the same. Okay? Same. Anyway, but we, uh, as Muslims, we put conditions for the, uh, but even we put conditions for the poor. Like, let's reduce your ambition. No, 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 no. <laughs> you know, you know the condition is, an ad. Justice is yeah. near to impossible. No. Yeah. Listen, listen, you know, ambassador, please. You know, one of the things I remember, you know how to do the customs? Uh, in early 1990s, 1990s, I was in Mali by that time. I was in Mali. Look at Mali. You know, you know Mali. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And uh, we got a professor from Canada. Her name is uh, Edith, something like this. I forgot the name. Uh, Fabian, Fabian. Madame Fabian. 
the professor of sociology. And she came just to learn to, to see you. She, she went with us, she's helping us from Canada. And she told me, she said, look, I want to come to visit Africa. She, she has no experience with Africa. But she's knowledgeable in Medicare. She's knowledgeable, really. When she came, she gave us uh, lessons as Han is doing with you now. And once we went to the, uh, the, the, the villages, you know, the Mukti, Mukti is almost three, 400 uh, kilometers out of Bama. I went to small villages. When we sit down with people, and she's speaking to them, we speak French, and they translate to Bambara Dok and Anglo Church. And it took us a long time, and people are very, 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 uh, very, very, very welcoming. Uh, and that, at noon time, it came uh, time for lunch. She's the only lady with us, by the way. We are, we are four, she's the only lady with us. And she's the boss of the world. But once we came to, to food time, the children will say, okay, now the, the, the lady has to go to home and there to eat with them. She will stay with us. She said, no, I will not go there. I will stay with me here. And because she don't know the culture of people, I tried to explain, and I said, Fabian, yeah, you come to stay with us. Because here, when it came to food time, it's separated. You have to go. She told me, this one, they don't speak French. Uh, I don't know how to deal with them. I said, okay, you have, you have, you have, to, you have to, to arrange yourself how to do that. And the, the team is, is, is adamant. He said, no, we can't eat with us. And finally, we find a solution. We say, okay, give us our, our lunch. We can go and eat while going back to Bamako. So you have to know that the cultures of the people and have to deal with them and to accept it. Because you cannot change even cultures of people. If you don't first accept it, you live with them. They, they, you have confidence. Well, they have confidence on you, and so they can learn you and they can understand you better. Uh, other questions? Yes, yes. Well, maybe it's a question, but uh, it's something that keeps coming to my mind. Uh, um, Otherwise. Yeah, it's for even for Islamic relief, the question. Um, as uh, Excellency uh, mentioned, reforming the society and community. So the same the question is that during the work of uh, orphans and donors, uh, so I was keep facing with this question, that yes, we are working for orphans, for sponsorship, but it's limited to the, like, to the basic need, like, we are feeding orphans up to a, a limit. Why not to invest on these categories? Why not to invest on these orphans and find, find the hidden talent in the orphans so they can be leader Islamic leader in the future, and that's a big invest. And we will be in that way. We will be working for Muslim community, Muslim society, and we can change the the face that nowadays the social media is uh, uh, presenting the Islam that in a different way, like terrorism and these things. If we invest in this category, these orphans, and find those hidden talented, so they will be a scientist a leader and they can represent in better way Islam and Muslim community. Because now uh, when I'm exchanging the reports and the messages between the donors and orphans, so I understand <coughs> there are some orphans who have a talent, who, are, uh, who become a mechan mechanical engineer with a very high degree, with a very limited uh, resources. So why not to work in these orphans and bring them and to represent our community? Allah <laughs> Akbar. This is coming back. I had it in the my This is come to pillar number three. Intellectual capability of the decision maker of the organization. By the way, take it or leave it. 50, 30, 40 dollars a month is not a sponsorship money. It's a waste of time. Sponsorship is to treat the orphan like your daughter and son. And I mentioned it many times before when I was in this orphan conference in uh, Turkey in 2016, I was saying that I want 120 dollars a month. Sheikh Ali Khaladari stopped me. 
when you when you fight, don't fight with the sheikhs publicly. Otherwise, they'll smash you. And he said, no, the word in the Holy Quran of Kafala Zakaria about Mary, Lady Mary السلام, that Zakaria السلام, was sponsoring it. Like his daughter, you spend the money on her like the money you spend on your daughter. Could be 200, 300 dollars. The dog bought any ceiling. This kafala, which is sponsorship. But from the marketing point of view, because we are closing, reaching the non ethical values, we call it a sponsorship. You can say it's support by a dollar or two or a five or ten. But the whole sponsor has to be reviewed. Are you, no, reviewed again. With the policy maker of the organization here, come back to the intention. Be frank <coughs> and explain what Allah said in the Quran. If you say that, you'll be able to discover the talent of the young people, to discover, to, to employ people to discover the talent of the young people and to mentor them and to nurture them for the future. But the 30, 40, 50 dollar is just hand out. You can, you can correct me, Your Excellency. Hand out, put the mouth, and that's the end of the story. Well, Ustaz, I think uh, regarding, regarding uh, Zakaria, uh, Nabi Zakaria, Prophet Zakaria, and uh, uh, Mary, maybe, maybe the example is not that one. You can, can, can build one. Because you know, when we see Quran Karim, what does that mean? Zakaria, we see his worship place. Her mother, she said that whatsoever I get, I deliver, I will offer him or her to the to the to, 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 to the career. Okay. So when she when, when she get a girl, she said, okay. Normally we give boys, but I will give her. Zakaria by that time he has no he has no thoughts. So she became as his daughter in that time. And she's living with him in the, in the worship place. So it's not the term of kapala. The term of kapala is something different. The term of kapala, it has, why we make it in the 1980s? Because before 1980s, there was the SOS, 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 SOS. SOS villages. You know that. Mm -hmm. We think that SOS villages is not the right, the right way of, of taking care of orphans because you, you deprive them from, from the sense of the family, you see. You keep them in, a, in an internship and so, and so they are completely in another space. So they don't know the sense of the family. So the, the Muslim organizations in 1980s came with this idea. Instead of taking them out of their families, let us keep them in the family. And just we, we sponsor them. We give them some money to help them and so on. There is, there is a lot of experiences with this. Sometimes we give money, but what we did in, 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 in Tsunami issues with the banks or this IDB, some mm -hmm. bank, we don't give money. We, 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 but we give service. We give service in health, in education, in training, and so on and so So it, it, it's different here and there. But I think that now I won't sign out to experiences. What is the point here? What they are doing? Uh, the uh, direct aid. Direct aid, what they are doing. Direct aid, what they do, they, they, they build the they build the schools and they take the orphans in their schools and they follow them from, from first year up to secondary school. And when they go to university, they, they continue supporting them in the university. So this is one of the experiences. Uh, it has pros and cons. You can suit away to, to, to make a graduation. But I like what Sheikh Haraji has done. Sheikh Haraji used to say that, look, we want to help orphans. But I want to help orphans that have uh, really uh, more intelligent and they need support really to go forward. So he just, he picked out those who are really outstanding. From the first year, he picked them. And he put them in his own schools, not schools for orphans, normal schools. And he paid for them everything. And he continued supporting them. He said, well, uh, uh, my contribution is to take the outstanding ones, clever ones. Others, there's a government that other organizations that can take. And I think it proves right because he, he makes a good, very good example. Too. So what you said is true. In this, the, the question of orphans, we need really a lot, a lot of reflection on that. There is a lot of experiences. 
And I think if we, if we sit down and discuss with it thoroughly, we can find a way really to give a, a new and new drama. How our NGOs can sponsor for us. Exactly. Can I propose something? When you, when you raise the question, my first idea is how are you going to define who's outstanding and not, and it's expensive. So you're going to be depriving someone from food because you think that this child is going to be a scientist, which he might not, he might. So for me, food is a basic. But there are lots of organizations. I think what you really can do to help those children is that there are organizations who are specialized in education. And I, from what I learned about your process of kafala, you're going through a, a long uh, vetting system to decide if this person is eligible or not. So what I would offer them, instead of you, instead of depriving other kids from food to really focus on one, is your network with your vetting, try to uh, say we have, we are sponsoring these kids for food, we need someone <coughs> to sponsor them for the education and we think from what we see so far and the visits we do that those kids can go for further education. So I would go for networking. Yeah. Well, I think with respect to what Allah said, I give my own experience here. Uh, I, I, I uh, sponsored, when we were in OIC, 25,000 orphans in uh, tsunami affected area in uh, Indonesia, in Bangladesh. But we made a lot of studies on that issue. Problem with orphans is not food, is not, is not, is not shelter. Even in the most poor societies, we haven't seen an orphan die from hunger. Absolutely. Because you see, it, this, this is, this uh, poor, poor, poor societies are really interconnected. Once they lose their, their, their father, there is the uncle, there is the, 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 the other members of the family, they take the orphan with them. He eat with their, with their, with their, with their sons, with the family. He, he get clothes with the family. He, he took the general care, but his problem is what? Problem is three things. One is education, the real problem. Second is health. Fourth is training. So these are the, the problems for orphans. I think that if we concentrate on this issue, we can help orphans better. But I have never seen an orphan, even in the most, you know, uh, poor, uh, societies always if we feed them out, we feed them food. I think uh, a good in between was Sister Allah said that when she said that instead of deafening up the <coughs> way for those who need it and giving it to one individual, is that we could set up another program that takes the orphans to the next level. So we visited orphans in Jordan, and what we consistently saw was that we're just giving them enough to survive, no more than that. Yeah. So if we can take those orphans and we see that they are progressing, they are surviving that we have another program that takes them to the next level where it goes into education, it goes into their talents and career, because across America, especially especially amongst the celebrities, like there's a famous artist, his name is P. Diddy, but he has his own excellent school where he brings young talented children and he finds their sports or activities. Like for example, Snoop Dogg, he opened his own American Football League for underdeveloped kids and black communities. He finds their talents and develops them. So if we can somehow have an in-between of like orphans and then after that, Take the next program where it's how do we develop them to the next level to the talents and education further because <coughs> even myself in Afghanistan they do have that they have special programs for kids in schools they see that they have talent there's a kid who invented um no sorry pardon? the robotics the robotics team so you just see that the sisters were there and they developed something just through those talents so inshallah if we can do a hybrid between those you want to make a comment yeah i'm just trying to say uh my aim was not to like uh, to say something about the process that we are currently having. This process, that sponsorship is is amazing, because when we visit the orphan family, they were so grateful for the yeah. for the for what they are receiving. But uh, besides that, if we could have another project, mm -hmm. like to find out other or the <coughs> talented orphans, because I can see uh, during the time that I had been deal with the orphans, this limited time. I can see there is a uh, intelligent, smart orphans. So if you could prepare a separate project, that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I so think just to, can I, um, just a question? Yeah. Um, the, the, like everything you're saying is very valid. I think one of one of the challenges that Islamic Relief faces is lots of the good stuff that we do. We're not the best at talking about it. 
or sharing it with people. So some of the stuff that you're mentioning does exist. Uh, one of the other challenges, there is no consistency. So it depends country by country, um, capacity by capacity, program by program. So one other thing that His Excellency was talking about earlier, which is the fundamental of our programming should be needs driven. Okay. So within Gaza, for example, within our orphan sponsorship program, uh, towards the end of the uh, orphans um, uh, sort of still being of, of a uh, an age of being young, if you like, before they reach adulthood, there is an uh, in-depth assessment, what are the future projections? With the needs and understanding that unfortunately within Gaza, future projections are limited. It's pointless in some of them pursuing a certain level of education if that climate and that situation, that education will be wasted. So actually what they've done is they're teaching them a certain level of livelihoods for which they can go straight in the market and then earn an amount of money. Okay, so it's needs driven. It's what are your skills? What would you like to do? How can we facilitate that? So it does happen. It can always be better. Um, consistently is under review. Yeah, go ahead. So, so just, um, just to follow up on what Saf mentioned, um, and I think what Dr. Hani said there is 100% where we are with the Orphans Programme. The Orphans Programme is all donation driven. We're always worried about if we charge, if we ask for £100 a month, we're not going to get money. It's all driven by other charities, and, and there's a, a push, actually, everyone's trying to cut each other to get more donations. Yeah? And this has been, unfortunately, you know, we haven't increased our prices for the last 15 years, 10, 15 years. Yeah. Cost of living has gone up many fold in these countries in, the, in that period of time. So the orphans team, now we're trying to, we are trying to, I, I'm not saying we're there yet, but we are trying to come into this space. Yeah. The orphans team now is actively trying to find, like you mentioned, a better way of supporting our orphans. Yeah? more integrated with our other programs. So, and there are examples, like Saf mentioned in, in, in Gaza, there's another program in Pakistan, I know where in the last few years, a handful of, a handful of orphans have graduated. There's one example of a, a, an orphan who has graduated, is now a doctor, and she's dedicated 25% of her salary to support more orphans in Pakistan. Yeah? In Kenya, there's, there's, there's one of the children in Kenya when we were there. Yeah. If you remember, for those who were in Kenya, they spoke about the fact, sorry to cut you, in Mandera, in the region, one of the children has become the governor. Okay. So, so they're there, and the program, and just to give you all a warning, the, the program will change. There will be some changes coming up this year. Prices will definitely increase, pretty much double. So as fundraising teams and marketing teams, yes, your job will be harder, but the program will be much more beneficial. Within the program, there will be elements around you know, the basic needs, education, trying to find a pathway to get the talented children to get into graduate schemes and jobs and so forth, or training programs, but also the families, livelihoods. So remember, these are the orphan child that we're sponsoring belongs to a family where typically there's no breadwinner. So how do we help that family to earn so they're not relying on money from us or money from anywhere else? That family, that mother, can, can and then, by the way, most, over 90% of the families we support actually would prefer to do it themselves, not have to rely on anyone else from their own hands, they want to care for their children. So okay, how can we help facilitate that? This is where now, you know, that third, third pyramid, trying to move into that. As fundraisers, as marketers, it makes our jobs harder. It's not a problem. That's not a problem, because what, what is our end purpose? We want to help those children. But also we have to see things through uh, the prism of their understanding. And, and I'll tell you, I was talking to Sarah, who's left now, Yes, um, myself and Sheikh Adnan, we were here in March and we visited uh, a Syrian uh, orphan. The Syrian orphan uh, had a disability. 
okay? Um, and it was a very awkward situation because I was sat talking to him with my broken Arabic, admittedly, and we were talking, and he kept saying, intihar. Okay? Suicide. Uh, he's saying that uh, I want to kill myself. And he was say, he, say, he keep repeating it again and again. He's 16 years old. He needs assistance from his mother to go to the toilet. Okay? He said, I, he said to me, he said, I'm thinking of being married, but in this state, and this happens to me, and that happens to me, or whatever else. Okay? Yesterday, Sada spoke to me with a big smile. From that visit, we were like, we walked away, our heads were down. It was like, because he's talking about suicide, he's saying, look, my mom is assisting me to go to the toilet. And what, what, what future do I have? What, what's the point? Okay, so the conversation had to be twisted and I had to, literally became, I, I reasonably experienced in counseling. It became me counseling him to try to make a positive uh, mindset and to try to make better of a situation. And within that situation, what is hope? What do you want the future to be? You know, you try and take it in that direction. Yesterday, walking, I was so happy because Sara said we wanted back to visit him. Uh, Alhamdulillah, we paid for an operation. He's walking. Okay? And now he's looking for work. So that impact is so simple, but it's life-changing. And in such situations, that's all that's needed. An element of hope, a target to work towards. And then it's life-changing. And it, and it may mean, rather than doing 100,000 of them, it's less. Less people, but more meaningful. Transformation, helping out, changing lives for the better. And, and that required a conversation with the donor to say, look, the medical treatment, to push them up the list, is going to cost $2,000. Okay. Private treatment, but it will be impactful. And alhamdulillah, the donor came forward, no problem, did it, and that's the impact. If we conclude this discussion about orphan, because orphan sponsorship or support is a cash cow for fundraising for you. We shouldn't treat orphan as actually the Excellency said, yeah, in different programs. And the example of uh, Maryam alayhi salam. <laughs> the program that you mentioned will cost money. Will never be the thirty dollar or the forty dollar or the fifty dollar. Okay. And you're being driven by the commercial competitiveness between you and the other organization. They say 29 pounds, you say 27 pounds, it's, it's a joke. If you calculate all the program, which is in excellence we're talking about, or, or Adnan and other, you'll find it collectively to any ordinary orphan without actually discovering the talent, it's rocket high. It's rocket high, it's not only, because unfortunately, they treat orphans, not, I'm, I'm not talking about you as a standard cream, as one size fits all. It cannot be one size fits all. Can be. A certain country can be X, another country can be Y. No flat rate. Because they are dealing with social, different social infrastructure, with different culture, different disability. As you said, sometimes you have to convince the donor to give you the money. So revisit the philosophy of the idea of orphan sponsorship, including the multi-dimensional program that you need to give to the orphan. As the time is his. The time is his. Yeah, last comment. Yeah, just the yeah. idea, uh, you know, the, I know this, this process is quite risky because it's not a free for land or donation. Uh, and, I, you know, I'm in the meetings, I understand, I completely understand this. But uh, the idea is, if we sponsor, if we sponsor those talented, we are not just helping those orphans. We are helping ourselves. This is why I am thinking. Yeah, yeah. We are helping, uh, helping uh, Islamic society yeah. to bring leaders to lead our uh, society against the competitor. Yeah. Where we, come, we have, we have, I mean, the, the Islamic uh, um, Muslim society have uh, competitors like uh, political wise and different wise. So these. Uh, orphan will help us, Islamic society, because they will be leaders and they will they will lead. Actually, we are not helping them. They will be helping us. So that's that's the, that's the idea. That's why I. Thank you, Shala, for the question and discussion. I'm going to. Um, is there any other questions? Okay, so I've got one, two, and then we'll wrap up because we are slightly over time, and we've got our guests. Yes, go ahead. Uh, thank if you, you introduce much. yourself, because the people don't know oh, you. Okay. As well. 
stand up. I'm standing up, by the way, again. Um, this is Tuba. Um, I'm, this is my third day, no, third day, right? <laughs> I'm counting the days in Islamic relief. Um, so I'm very happy to have you here. And, uh, it, it is a very fast orientation for me um, to learn about your um, approach. Thank you very much for the for uh, your uh, experience sharing and the presentation. Um, I I definitely agree with her, and actually I understand all the approaches. I think uh, I, I need to talk about a little bit about the orphan because I I am raised as an orphan, so they uh, actually need. Of course, the food is very important, right? And it's, it's the beginning of um, beginning stage. Remember the Maslow hierarchy. So, but I think the belonging need is the second thing that they need to uh, to need to get fulfilled. And if the uh, if the goal, the ultimate goal, is the, um, building a community, um, it definitely needs to invest, as you all know, to the talent. The, the, it doesn't need to be a talent, but uh, I understand there are other competitors, like we say, like Christians, like missionaries. If you if you don't get them, others will get them. So that's something else. I think your point was important for me. Um, in Turkey, I have a question actually now. Is that that was my idea? But can I sit down now? <laughs> um, so in Turkey, I have a question about the background and how would you are thinking, you know, depending on your uh, experience. Um, we had a coup, like in 2000, uh, 2016, like, like, it's in, like six years. And that coup was uh, depending on an Islamic uh, non-profit organization and their financials were also supported by the community's donations. I don't, I do not know if you are aware of the, this thing, but it it really affected the uh, fundraising activities in Turkey. Actually, I mean the the, the trust, the level of trust, has been um, attacked. So uh, now in Turkey, the, the non the, there are uh, non-profit organizations with Islamic relief or non-religious uh, activities. They are affected of this. Now it, we are covering that. But my question is, um, I think Islamic relief in Turkey uh, has a really good uh, background and you know support, I see. So we start like from uh, point one instead of zero. But in terms of the uh, misperceptions, current misperceptions in the society. Um, I sometimes feel like we are coming behind, like from the zero, zero levels. I worked uh, as a fundraiser, uh, fundraiser co uh, coordinator uh, in a nonprofit organization like uh, for two years. And it was more political, but uh, also supported by the Islamic political view, view of a kind of uh, organization. So there are, there was some issues to collect the money there. And um, in the, on the streets, there, the, the people have now has a response, a negative response. In, even if you are talking about any Islamic um, verbs, like the terminology, you know, it's, it's very sad. We are 90% uh, Muslim country here. So the challenge is here to to redevelop the trust level, uh, to uh, to create a system that is really <coughs> transparent. That, that I feel Islamic Relief has the sufficient um, background. I, I know because in Turkey the the reports, the financial reports of non non profit organizations are, are not open to society. So. The people has question marks, especially after the coup. That is very really, like tough. So my question is, how would you um, set up the system? What would be, what would be uh, what would be your approach would be like, and where would you start it? So okay. thank you. Uh, shukran. Uh, yes, because I'm, I'm conscious of the time. Yeah, we've got literally okay. yeah, we're out of time. Okay. Uh, we're out of time, but yeah, yeah. answer. 
You have to be transparent. That's the first step. Community is giving you the money every day. You do not hide anything from the community. That's number one. You have to follow the humanitarian principles, which is six or seven points. And maybe Salah or Adnan can distribute to all of you. You have to be non-alliance to any political party. No way. In Turkey, it's a little bit hard. It does. I'm, I'm not, forget about Turkey. Right. I'm not talking about Turkey. I'm not talking about the coup. Once you go to this direction, you will be a dead man. Even if the president is your brother or your sister or whatever, it does not make any difference for you. Because people look at you as humanitarian, social, even social organization. Right. They have to be neutral and impartial. Okay? Because the enemy of the social movement will try hard to dismantle the social movement. The social movement is the foundation of future leadership, fighting corruption, protecting the country from inside, because they create leaders. And if you step one foot to the right or to the left, you kill the organization. Well, I've seen organizations before September 11th in America or after September 11th being closed down because they were not transparent. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, don't ever use Islam to benefit your organization by twisting the explanation or tafsir of Quran and the Hadith. This is number uh, five. And if you would like to be protected, you have to make a lot of partnership with different Muslim and non-Muslim, government and non-government organization to be protected. I just finished with this. Thank you, sister. Miriam, last question. Go with an excellency. Whatever. So back in the 80s when you started, I mean Islamic League started growing and you wanted to open like new offices, how did you choose like... You are the founder of Islamic League. Where, like what countries to go and there was no internet, you were, you had limited resources. So once you, what country you choose and once you land, what do you do there? Uh, to be very honest, firstly, we were looking at the rich countries to respond like Europe. Secondly, we're choosing the most, uh, the poorest countries. We went to Bangladesh, Sudan, then to other countries in Africa and in Asia. Then the countries are affected by conflict, like Bosnia, like others. Then the countries are affected by uh, uh, natural disasters, okay, like in tsunami and others. So this actually have criteria. Sometimes you say that in the country forever, Sometimes you stay for a short period of time. Actually, this was at the beginning. Nowadays, they plan better by having a lot of studies and some funding and partnership and who is there to work with. But once you reach in the country, like you need people. I mean, you need local people. Yeah. Local people. You have to empower the local people. So you look for them once. That's right. Okay, I'm gonna end there. Can you stop the recording?